wrote her second graphic memoir, Are You My Mother? Alison Bechdel includes snippets of books she finds relevant to her story and then well, draws them into the comic. This hand-drawn text is different than the bespoke computer-generated typeface that she uses for dialogue and captions throughout the text. Reading through the comic the first time, I was struck by the following question. Should I read these words like text or look at them like pictures? And what does that mean for comics? I'm Andrea Gilroy, and this is Comics Crash Course. Back to the Bechdel page for a moment. You see, on the one hand, the presence of a heading, clear margins, highlighting, and the way the text continues off the pages, that indicates that Bechdel means for us to understand this, that this is a picture of a book, no less a product of cartooning than Bechdel's drawing of her own face in the last panel on this page. The words are useful for understanding the text, but they're not necessary. She'll repeat the relevant information in captions or dialogue. But the text is carefully rendered and clear enough to read. So what is it? Words? Images? In his important book, Iconology, media scholar W.J.T. Mitchell explains that, historically, words and images are considered practically opposites. In this historical view, Images are so-called natural signs because, well, they're thought to be interpreted based on our natural ability to see and compare a representation to its original object in the world. So a picture of a dog looks like a dog. Words, on the other hand, are called conventional signs because the meanings of the verbal sounds that the symbols of written language represent are established collectively, culturally, and arbitrarily. In other words, conventionally, by societies. While more recent media theorists like Roland Barthes and Ernst Gombrich admit that the interpretation of images is far more complex than a straightforward comparison to nature, I explained how Barthes compares interpreting images to language in episodes 23 and episode 28. Both theorists still hold to the idea that there is a difference in the degree of interpretation involved in interacting with words and pictures. In other words, they can't completely get rid of the idea that words and images are fundamentally different. And aren't they? Well, W.J.T. Mitchell doesn't think so. He famously invents the word image text to describe media and forms in which words and images combine to create new meaning neither element alone could create and you can't actually really pull the image apart from the text. Thus, both elements work together as a seamless whole. This applies to obvious forms like maybe illustrated texts or posters, but can also apply to typefaces, which you might also call fonts. You know, see, I think that Comic Sans always screams fun, right? Now, see, that's a good joke because everyone knows about Comic Sans at this point. It's a joke in itself because it looks like it's trying too hard to be fun and cute. And when it's used for serious documents, it makes the whole thing seem less serious. Now, likewise, you could use a really serious typeface in playful circumstances, and that would also change the meaning. You see, the visual and the verbal are deeply interconnected. The visual la nature of language affects the meaning as much, if not more, than the words themselves. Mitchell also argues that image text can apply to comics, and many comic scholars agree. In fact, one of the more commonplace ideas in comics theory is the idea that comics collapses the difference between words and images. In understanding comics, uh, McLeod starts by trying to define the form, a definition we've seen a couple times at this point, and there's a telling little moment in this exchange. Talking to an imagined audience, McLeod has settled on quote, juxtapose static images in deliberate sequence, when an audience member called Bob responds, what about words? And McLeod says, well, you don't have to have words to be comics, but Bob clarifies that's not what he means. Words, he says, count as comics in McLeod's current definition. Letters are static images, right? When they're arranged in a deliberate sequence, placed next to each other, we call them words. Well, McLeod, the author, seems to feel this is a good point, but his response is simply to add the phrase pictorial and other in place of static and move on. 
the conundrum remains. Juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence intended to convey information and or produce an aesthetic response in the viewer is still as good a description for written words as it is for comics, right? Though McLeod ignores the messiness of the distinction between word and image here, or at least moves on from it, elsewhere in the text he wholly embraces it, saying that in comics words can become like pictures and pictures like words. That's the point of the language border in the big triangle, and this idea that comics collapse the distinction between word and image is pretty widely accepted, repeated by scholars like Chris Rayburn, Rocco Versace, Julian Whitlock, and Charles Hatfield, among many others. And I'm really sympathetic to this idea. I completely disagree with the old version that goes back to the concept that images are natural and words are conventional. I certainly agree more with someone like Bosch that images are also interpreted according to social convention and style. But then I think of that Bechdel page. Can't I tell there's something different? between some words and other words? Words that act like images and words that act like words? So what does that mean for that whole word image thing? Think of sound effects, for example. We read them a bit differently than dialogue and captions. The whole point of this joke from Hellboy is that we can tell one boom is an image word and one boom is a word word. So. On the one hand, I understand that words and their interpretation can be affected by their visual presentation, and that makes them essentially images, no difference. On the other hand, I also know that there's a difference between words and images, and I read them accordingly. So here's my argument. While there is no fundamental difference between the written word and images formally, there is a difference defined by social convention and context. Comics is a form that forces the two supposed poles of representation to work together constantly. It's not the only one, but it's an important part of many, if not most, comics that the written word and images appear side by side. That means that an ability to manipulate and adapt social ideas about what counts as an image and what counts as words is part of the toolbox of a comics artist. And when they do this right, it produces some of the most stunning, exciting, and downright bewildering visual experiences you can have. Bechdel gets you to question the nature of what is often considered an opposing pair of our culture. And of course, if you read further into her work, you'll know that she always is thinking about breaking down all kinds of social binaries. Will Eisner's The Spirit famously uses its title pages to incorporate the title of the strip into the world itself, making the name of the character part of the landscape. In American Flag, Howard Chaikin's use of sound effects is inventive and adds to the sense of design and helps contribute to this almost sort of cyberpunk sense of information and media overload. Now, good artists have been doing this for a really, really long time, by the way. And it's not just a comics thing, but comics, do it really, really well. And, well, that's what I'm all about. See you next time.